This is a knife throwing machine. It ranges the target, aims a laser, and computes a throwing solution so it sticks the knife every time. And because it measures in the infrared, it even works in the dark. Back in high school, I was really into martial arts. Looking back, probably too into them. Then this movie, Under Siege, came out about a Navy SEAL that could throw knives, and I was hooked. And in theory, it's simple. Match the knife's rotation to the distance so the tip hits the target. But in practice, it's hard. There are so many other ways the knife can hit the board, and I've found all of them. And as soon as you get some success, changing the distance a bit is like starting over. Cutting edge technology should do this easily if we can keep it from destroying itself. Oh no! Here's what I want. A machine that can stick 10 knives consecutively from changing distances of three to five meters. No wires tethering it to external power or a computer. And lastly, it's gotta be light enough to carry, so let's say less than 20 pounds. The first thing we need is to measure the speed of a thrown knife. Slow-mo video on a good day shows I throw around 10 meters per second. But instead of flinging the knife like an arm, I need to dream up some arrangement of motors and pulleys that can launch it at a similar speed and rotation. But honestly, I don't know if we can find motors fast and powerful enough to throw like a human. I'd hope to use the kind I installed on my milling machine, but steppers are way too slow. Turns out we need high performance servo motors, and enabling that performance requires hellacious batteries. For a quick test, I'm mounting one to some bar stock and trusting my 13 year old to man the controls. That thing makes wind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now come over here with the mouse pointer and I want to see just a pulse and see how fast the labels move on this belt. They were there. And it's going that way. No way. Do it again. <laughs> wind. You were right about the wind. You feel the wind? <laughs> <laughs> but as impressive as that motor is, it's still not enough. I wanted to use a tiny motor to spin the knife and this larger one to launch, but there's just not enough torque to accelerate all that mass over such a short distance. But if I use two high performance motors side by side, not only do we double the power, we can run one faster than the other and spin the knife any way we want. Think of it like one of those hand helicopter toys. It's tricky, but you can spin it and throw it simultaneously. But linking two high-performance motors together requires a sturdy metal frame. And because it's a prototype, we want to carve slots everywhere to allow for adjustments when tuning. We're also machining our own custom lightweight pulley hubs and 3D printing the teeth, since everything the motors move needs to be as light as possible. All right, let her rip. Oh, I felt the thump of that. Oh, oh, was that on camera? I think my guts were right. Oh my gosh. Did it, did it hurt? It stung a little bit. Of course, any kid would enjoy smacking their dad with a cutting edge thrower, but there is a method to my madness. You see, programming is way more fun when you're controlling something powerful, and in this configuration, as long as my son keeps his distance, there's literally nothing that can get damaged. And it's important that he sharpen his skills now, because we're about to take this thing right to the edge. In order to throw a knife, we need to grab and release it quickly. And I think an electromagnet is our best chance for success. I designed this carriage to hold the magnet between both belts so that it's free to rotate when the motors run at different speeds. A sharp eye might wonder how I intend to get electricity to this moving, spinning magnet, and I'm glad you asked. The carriage is packed with brushes intended for electric motors. One set rides on a set of slip rings wired to the magnet, while the other set slides up and down these long copper bars that double as guides to keep the carriage moving straight and true. To start out, we're testing with a small square plate in the shop to see if my son's code switches the magnet on and off as intended. But there's still some residual magnetism keeping it from letting go until we get to a high enough speed. Whoa. Oh, yeah! 
<laughs> he killed it. Apparently eight meters per second is what it takes to kill a box. The math says we'll max out at 14 meters per second with this combination of motors and pulleys, but there's no way we're getting anywhere close to that indoors. Fair warning, this next part is still hard for me to watch. Oh, oh, oh no! For the record, this crash had nothing to do with my son's programming. These high performance motors require tuning that, go figure, wasn't designed for a configuration like this. So when we took them to their theoretical limits, they overshot and crashed into the pulleys at the end. And in all the commotion, my son was still holding the fire button. So when the carriage returned home, it immediately fired a second time, completely separating itself from the thrower. Fortunately, 3D printed parts are relatively simple to replace. Plus, since they're plastic, they're unlikely to damage the bulk of the thrower. I'm not gonna lie, that failure slashed our egos pretty bad. But before long, we were back at it with an even bigger piece of metal to better simulate a knife. And it's revealing a problem I was concerned about from the beginning. The magnet is rotating, but our hunk of metal is not. The math says the straight line acceleration requires about 10 pounds of force which the electromagnet can handle just fine. What it can't do is additionally spin the load. So we're basically tossing this hunk of metal with no spin whatsoever. To fix it, we're machining teeth into the rim of the magnet like a castle nut and a mating socket into our piece of stock with one little raised spoke. Plus, I took a stab at sharpening one end in the hopes of maybe sticking it into a target. But teaching our robot to stick a knife is a lot like teaching me to throw a knife. Bounce after bounce after bounce. What we want is the classic thunk sound of a blade into wood. But no matter what combination of settings we try, it's nothing but clangs. By the way, my son legitimately is programming this entire thing. All I did was derive the formulas for calculating motor speed, which I'm beginning to question whether I got right or not. All I did was figure what diameter wheel would give one and a quarter turns if it were rolling to the target. That would put our vertically oriented knife point forward into the wood. After that, it was just a bunch of triangles and a little algebra to find the ratios of accelerations and velocities of each motor. The average of those being the knife itself. And then, just when we were about ready to throw in the towel, we got that sweet sound of success we were looking for all along. Three. Two, one. Yeah! 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 Big hug, man. Oh. <laughs> did you catch? Did you catch it yes, on here? I did. Oh my gosh! But the question now is, can we repeat it? We made so many failed attempts. This was bound to happen eventually, just by accident. Oh, yeah. Three, two, two one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe right here, right? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. All right. That is three in a row. Okay, so we've proven we can throw a hunk okay, of bar so stock, but I want to throw the same knife as the Navy SEAL in that documentary. Some of you are going to say, hey, magnets don't work on stainless steel, but not so fast. It depends on the alloy and how it's heat treated because a magnet can grab these knives, sort of, but also has some difficulty letting go. Bottom line, we got it to stick once, but it was so inconsistent, I think I'm just gonna try making my own knives out of the same mild steel I used the first time. Yes, it's a terrible choice for knife material, but it's cheap and already in my shop. If it works well, I'll invest in some tool steel or spring steel instead.
but though we had some initial success, we're not getting the consistency we need. And if anyone wanted proof why mild steel is no good for knives, here it is. Oh no! To get more consistent throws and permit us to use store-bought knives, I want to try an actuator like a solenoid to positively grab the knife. I just need to make a slot in the knife and machine a custom two-fingered plunger to replace the one that came with the solenoid. That will allow us to simply hang the knife on the fingers and actuate the solenoid when we want to let go. And we must be on the right path because we managed 20 consecutive sticks before a failure. Unfortunately, that was the last good performance we had for a while. For starters, the knife suddenly couldn't make up its mind whether to fall off at the start or not let go until after the carriage completely stopped at the end. And it seemed like every time we wanted to try Three, to fix it, we had two, to choose between the one. rain or the dark, or sometimes the rain and the dark. Nope. The giant 3D printed magazine I designed wouldn't feed the knife. And here's something fun. As we mounted the electronics, it started trying to cycle on its own as if the knife throwing gods or Skynet had suddenly taken over. Why? Why do you do this to me? Then after struggling for days to get this LiDAR sensor to talk to the controller, this happened. I just screwed something up. I was just unplugging things connected to the microcontroller and I believe I just killed a $150 LiDAR sensor. That sucks. If you've ever been around an animal that would sit quietly then try to bite you without warning, you have some idea what this thing was like during development. But turns out all we had to do was stay out of harm's way and keep trying. Through experimentation, we discovered a wide pocket in the back of the knife works way better than a tight-fitting slot. And installing a support does wonders keeping the knife from falling off the fingers too soon. After seemingly endless issues, too many to list, we finally started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Here's how it works. Push the range button to activate the LiDAR and measure the distance to the target. The thrower then calculates and adjusts the angle of the aiming laser to compensate for the trajectory of the knife. At that point, pressing the fire button will stick a knife wherever the laser is aiming. Holding the button will throw knives as fast as the machine can cycle, but for now I'm just making sure it loads right for every shot. Also, I'm honestly not sure how many knives can fit in the magazine, but all 12 that I have feed great. Plus, it's accurate enough, I have to spread them out on the target so the knives don't hit each other. That's dead. Oh, last one. So I already did 11? All right, three, two, one. Oh no! <laughs> Would have stuck. A little off. <laughs> well, I'm throwing knives out of a machine, man. <laughs> but I got the 10, that was the, that, that was, was the, the thing. Goal. We got, we got 10. Oh my gosh, look at that. But wait a sec. I said consecutive knife throws from changing distances. Well, here goes. Did I do it? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> that was ten. Oh my gosh. We got it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> okay, so why did we create this crazy machine that can throw knives at the touch of a button? Well, other than creating an amazing educational experience for my kids, I've had this 
physics question burning in my mind about knife throwing for the last two decades that that machine is going to help me solve. But before I tell you about what that question is, first I need to tell you about the sponsor for this video. Brilliant is this online learning platform that helps you learn interactively. When I started this project and was looking for any information that could help, I was stoked to learn Brilliant had a lesson on axe throwing. I honestly had no idea how I was going to tell a machine to spin a knife and make it stick. And though I'm an engineer with 20 years of experience, their examples taught me things I didn't anticipate and helped me better understand the spinning knife challenge I was about to face. Brilliant even changed the way I think about education. When I answer a question incorrectly, instead of getting a bad score, I get more information customized to help me with that specific problem. And if I don't feel totally confident, I can do the lesson over at whatever pace I want, whenever I want. Whether I'm on the road with my laptop or just waiting somewhere with my phone, I like that I can fill that time with Brilliant. Even if I don't finish the lesson, it's there waiting for me whenever I come back to it. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org forward slash Quint Builds, and the first 200 of you will get a 20% discount off a premium membership. Oh, hey, we haven't checked if it's under 20 pounds or not. 32, 8, or 9, whatever. 32? Okay, so a skosh over 20 pounds then. <laughs> okay, so the real reason we built this thing is that when I first started throwing knives, I could hardly ever get one to stick. And out of frustration, I'd pick up a knife and try to just stick it into the target, and it wouldn't stay. I was like, wait a minute, a lightly thrown knife will go in like more than double that deep into the target? Why is that? And my best guess now as an engineer is it has something to do with the rotational kinetic energy of the knife, but it just doesn't seem like that's enough. Either way, this machine is going to allow us to test that. So we're going to make a follow-up video with all kinds of trick shots and play with the rotation of the knife to see how deep the knife goes and how much of a factor that is. Also, if you want to know more details about how this thing was built, go to my smaller channel, Build2, and I'll have a video there going into all the little nitty gritty that didn't make the main channel. And if you haven't yet, like, subscribe, check us out on Patreon, because man, without patrons, there's no way we could afford to do this. And see you in the next video. Anything to add? We have yet to stick a knife into a watermelon. This is true. We'll do that in the follow-up. There you go.